All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh by Shimei Al Shai. It's Rabbi of God. And uh, got another ZOI class lesson to deal with. And this one dealing with prayer. All right, this is uh, something that is. <clears throat> and I'm going to title the video The Power of Prayer. Um, and this is something that's essential to our walk. This is something that we have, we have to use to have access to the Most High and the power of the Heavenly Father, all right? To help us in our daily walk in this darkness that we live in dealing with this world, this current present world, okay? Um, so with that being said, let's go ahead and go into these scriptures, all right? <clears throat> I'm going to go to Philippians uh, 4 and 6 first and foremost right because like I like I said uh, prayer is essential to our walk is essential to our life we cannot um, not we can't uh, be in this truth and not pray we have to always constantly pray all right so let's go ahead and go to Philippians 4 and 6 real quick All right, so Philippians chapter four, verse six, and it reads, <clears throat> be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. All right, and it says, uh, be careful for nothing. So in other words, um, whatever you have to pray for, knowing that it's a legitimate prayer, it's a prayer for, uh, it's full of legitimacy. It's full full of sincerity. Um, don't hesitate to ask, basically. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. So you got to let your request request in uh, supplication means um, asking. All right. Got to let them let them be made known unto the heavenly Father. All right. <clears throat> so. With that being said, let's go ahead and go to Matthew 7 and 7. Because in this walk, we, you know, we got to pray for sincerity. We got to pray for healing. We got to pray <clears throat> to give thanks to the Heavenly Father because it also talked about Thanksgiving. We got to give Thanksgiving to the Heavenly Father <clears throat> um, and, sh and, and, and uh, telling him that he, that, and showing him that you're appreciative of his. <clears throat> his work that he's done unto you first and foremost waking you up to this truth and giving you the understanding to un to know who you are in these last days as a Hebrew Israelite as a um, member of the 12 tribes because there's a, a vast majority of our people throughout the four corners that are vast that a vast amount of our people that are asleep right now and they're never going to wake up to this thing so we have to give praise unto him and we got to ask in um Ask for things that are of necessity and some things that we need, you know, th some things that we desire in righteousness sake, in balance. All right. So Matthew 7 and 7. Okay. So this is the book of Matthew 7 and 7. <clears throat> Let's see. And actually while I'm here, right. Let me go ahead and go to uh, actually yeah, Matt, no. Let me stay in here. Matthew seven and seven. So yeah, Matthew seven seven and seven. It says, "Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you." So you got to ask unto the heavenly Father. You know what I'm saying? Knock and you shall find. Seek and you shall find. All right. And it, that can include a multitude of different things, whether it be things in spiritual in the intangible form which is the spiritual realm from a spiritual standpoint for healing for strength <clears throat> script, scriptural knowledge um become more wiser become more astute so on and so forth or you can also ask the heavenly father for things of necessity uh, necess things of necessity in this world as well as things uh that you that you might desire all right <clears throat> 
for everyone that asketh receiveth so everyone that asketh receiveth right if and he that seeketh findeth and to him that knocketh it shall be open so you got to you got to ask the most high sincerely unto the heavenly father that you know for certain things you know what i'm saying things that you desire and things that you think think uh things that you need okay so <clears throat> Reading on, let's go ahead and go to First John. Yeah, First John five and fourteen. Let's see. Let me go there real quick. Okay, watch this. First John 5 and 14, and it reads, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, anything according to his will, all right, things of substance, things things of necessity, and, and sometimes in in other in some cases, things that you desire, right? If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So if it's according to his will, if he desires it, if he permits it, basically, then guess what? It, he will allow it. All right. And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. So <clears throat> understanding that we know that the Lord is dealing with us. If <clears throat> we pray and he hears us and he grants us what we desire or uh, the desire of our prayer a necessity or, or personal desires according to his will and it said because it says whatsoever uh and if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him so we know that things are established that the lord has given us all right and we know that the lord um you know it was of his will all right so we got so hitting the hitting up point um home in this in this first part of this uh video we have to understand we have to uh have faith and be careful of nothing and be uh, on point and what we ask and not fear asking our heavenly father because you know like um you know the worldly saying is which is a true saying uh closed mouths don't get fed okay so you gotta, you, if you desire things of the Lord and you net and you need them, all right, from a physical, from a spiritual and, and physical uh, aspect, then ask the Heavenly Father. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and go to Ephesians six and eighteen, all right. <clears throat> so this is the book of Ephesians. Uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 and it reads praying always and this part of the spirit this part of the spiritual armor uh, the armor of God the full armor of God right Ephesians 6 and 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication it says praying always with all prayer we have to always constantly pray and supplication in the spirit so we got to be in the spirit when we pray all right and you will i know the spirit when the lord uh allows you to see it he'll give you the wisdom the understanding to understand when it's the spirit because we can't go off of any old wayward spirit the scriptures tell you tell you that in first john uh four chapter the first verse you know we can't be uh dry uh dr driven away uh to and fro by everyone that drop doctrine so we got to understand that um and watching they're in two with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So we got to watch, uh, and we got to constantly be watching. They're unto with all perseverance. So we got to pers, uh, we have we have to uh, constantly, diligently pray, and with all prayer, all right, in giving supplication to the Lord for all saints. Okay, so that's what we got to do, all right. That's what we constantly got to do, all right. So, 
Let's see. Let's go ahead and um, go to Colossians 4 and 2. Okay. <clears throat> the book of Colossians chapter 4 verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So we got to constantly pray in uh and give watch, all right? Especially as watchmen, as myself and many brothers that are on the street corners teaching the word sincerely and truthfully for the Lord, through the name of the Son, Yahweh Shai, all right? Constantly watch and pray and give thanksgiving to the Heavenly Father, all right? So, <clears throat> always constantly watch and pray, all right? Watch as well as pray, as the scriptures say, all right? So, uh, Sirach 12 and one, all right? And I wanna hit this part home, um, real quick so Sirach 12 and 1 okay because we also got to understand that prayer is a powerful that's why I'm gonna name this title the power of prayer we, un we understand that prayer is powerful but we got to understand we can't always because we pray for all the Saints we pray for ourselves we pray for brothers and sisters or brothers and sisters potentially entering into, into the knowledge but we can't all always pray for everybody and this is all scriptorial all right script this is all scriptural, all right? So, Sirach, uh, the book of Sirach, chapter 12, verse 1. When thou do good, and it's a good thing to pray, right? When thou do good, know to whom thou doest it. So we got to know to whom uh, we do good to, right? So shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits. So we got to, so we'll be thanked and honored for our benefits. You know, uh, you know, so we, we'll be recompensed by the Heavenly Father with it, all right? So let's keep reading. Do good to the godly man. So in other words, in this lesson, what I'm basically saying is pray to the godly man, to the ones that are striving to uh, come into this baptism, to this knowledge, the baptism of the knowledge, the, the washing of, word, of the word, um, the washing of sins and cleansing of the sins through the word. All right, okay. Do good to the godly man and thou shalt find a recompense You'll be recompensed for for uh, doing good to the godly man by praying for him. The godly man, godly woman, all right? And is, of, of the nation of Israel, all right? Our people that come into this knowledge or that's entering into the knowledge, going through that process, right? And thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the Most High. So you're going to be recompensed from the Most High from praying for other brothers and sisters that's in this knowledge, that's in this truth, that's that's coming up out of the world into this truth. <clears throat> there can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. <clears throat> so no good can come to an individual that is stingy, that is um, <clears throat> always occupied in wickedness, always occupied in sin, in transgression of the law of the Lord, which is evil, which is sin, all right, <clears throat> of many different things, all right, being a world, basically being a worldly, uh, wicked Israelite, all right, <clears throat> of all, of all kinds, whether it be, you know, so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, and the Isra Israelite foreigners throughout the four corners, right, um, uh, verse 4 And no good can come to that man Or woman Give give to the godly man Pray for the godly man In other words And help not a sinner And help not a sinner So if someone's always occupied in sin And they're not trying to get their life right And get their minds right into the truth And they're not trying to make that effort They're not trying to uh, Make that effort into the uh, To and to clean, cleansing their own soul, their own spirit, right? Um, pray not for that man. Do do not good to that person, particular person. All right. And you know what I'm saying get do good to the ones that are righteous, the ones that are trying to make the effort, even the ones entering in, and the ones that are already in. All right. Verse five. Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread. So hold back thy bread. That that also can translate into praying for that particular person, and give it not unto him, lest he 
overmaster thee thereby, for else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good that, for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. So the Lord is going to recompense uh, evil upon you for doing good to an evil man, an evil person, a sinful, wicked person, a transgressor, a transgressor of the law. All right. So just keep keep uh, giving you an understanding and edification on that particular point. <clears throat> um, and even Jeremiah the book, and I'm going to bring this out in the book of Jeremiah he even understood this during his time and guess what the same times apply to, 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 to today to this very uh, even unto this day alright 11 Jeremiah <coughs> <coughs> book of Jeremiah chapter 11 verse 14 <coughs> and it reads Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to start at verse 13. I'm going to start at verse 12 to give you, get you the uh, context, right? Because when you read the book of Jeremiah, read it from front to back. At first, he he was praying. He, you know, he, he wanted liberation for his people. But when he knew, especially when you read in the deeper chapters, in the 30, 30th, 30 to 40 chapters, especially with, uh, I believe, Zedekiah. It was either, yeah, Zedekiah, I believe. All right was doing what he did what he did to him all right put him in jail and all this other stuff that israel was doing he basically you know didn't want to pray for him he basically gave him their judgment and they got the judgment of that time all right so jeremiah chapter 11 verse 12 then shall the cities of judah and the inhabitants of jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense but they shall not save them at all in night it's like it in all them at all in the time of their trouble so you know this is what our people was doing this is what our people is doing to, the, to this very day uh, our people's a nation uh, a nation before it's a place Jerusalem Judah so on and so forth right um, they were sacrificing to uh, God, unrighteous gods you know pagan gods and, and the Lord jacked them up for it all right, verse 13, for according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even to altars to burn incense unto Baal. All right, people was worshiping Baal, Satan. All right, during the Babylonian, uh, it, it, even pri a little prior to the Babylonian uh, captivity. All right, verse 14, therefore pray not thou for this people neither lift, lift up a cry for them for i will not hear them in the time of time it's like I, I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble okay so that's jeremiah speaking through the you know that's jeremiah speaking you know what i'm saying and this is the most high speaking through him man huh? all right <clears throat> pray not for this people you know what i'm saying so he's not praying for the whole nation and we don't pray for the whole nation. We pray for, and, and, and see, I'm going to say this too, because <clears throat> I see Israelites all the time, right? Always talking about pray for this. Oh, pray for Puerto Rico. Pray for the Bahamas. Pray for, no, it's pray for the elect. Pray for the uh, hopeful elect that's down there in those particular lands. We don't pray for everybody. That's what the scriptures tell you to, tell you not to do. And guess what? Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who the world calls Christ, tells you not to do this. So with that said, I'm gonna bring that out. John uh, 17 and 9. Alright? I'm gonna bring this out in John 17 and 9. Alright. Uh, John 17 and 9. It says, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And who is thy? The saints. Not the saints are not all Israelites. All right, the Slakia. When I say the saints are not all uh, Israel, all right, the saints are all Israelites, but they're not every single Israelites that are um, on this planet. All right. So when you deal with the uh, 
Yahweh Shah, who the world calls Christ, right? And read this again, John 17 and 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. And that world in the Greek is, is cosmos, all right? Which is speaking of what? It's speaking of a particular world. And that particular aggregate in uh, selective sorts or, of, or, you know, or whatnot is the world of Israel. So he's not praying for the whole world itself. He's not playing for the planet Earth. He's not playing, praying for these other nations in the Earth. He's praying for his nation. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. I don't, he don't pray for all of Israel. But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. So it's the Israelites that are repentant, that are of a righteous mindset. All right? That's who he prays for. He doesn't pray for all, all Israel. Okay? And, and guess what? If we're following the footsteps of Yahusha and Mashiach, we don't pray for all Israel. Verse 10, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I glorify, and I am glorified in them. So we're all glorified in him. All right. Okay. So let's go ahead and go to 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17. Okay. Because we got, we got to always pray. All right. Constantly being prayer, constantly being, um, you know, giving supplication unto the Heavenly Father. All right. But we also got to know who we pray for and what we pray for. Who we pray for and what we pray for. Okay. We pray for the nation. Pray for the repentant Israelites and the Israel and the Israelites that are just and that are on the verge of converting. All right. Also, too, for ourselves. All right. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 Pray without ceasing So we got to constantly pray We got to constantly endure And constantly pray without ceasing Praying, you know One, one, uh, one, one thing I like to add is uh, You know, you can pray um, In your mind Alright It doesn't always have to be out It doesn't always have to be facing the east Alright Praying can also involve praying in your mind and I call those pocket prayers you know what I'm saying it's like a quick quick prayer you send up to the Heavenly Father while you're on your day while wherever you're at doing whatever you do uh, saving some time to just send up a quick prayer okay your day, daily goings all right <clears throat> Luke 18 and 1 18 and 1 let's go let's go there all right Book of Luke chapter 18 verse 1 and it reads <clears throat> and he spake a parable unto them and this is Yahweh Shai that spoke this parable that the narrator is basically giving you and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always uh, to pray and not to faint <clears throat> so men have to always pray and not faint if you're not praying you're being effeminate Right, you're being a weak minded uh, man with female characteristics when you're supposed to be a manly man, so you have to always pray and not faint. All right, this is our power, this is uh, what the Lord has left us in, in this wicked society that we live in. All right, um, let's go ahead and go to Matthew 6 and 5. Book of Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 Alright Because this is where you're supposed to pray And you know you got to pray in secret Alright Matthew 6 and 5 Alright When thou prayest Thou shalt not be, the, be as the hypocrites are So we can't be like the hypocrites are Praying out in the open And videotaping our prayers out in the open Or going out and Putting up our holy hands and, and praying to the Most High out and out and about and letting the whole world know about it because guess what Matthew uh, six and five when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues all right that's what a hypocrite does that's what the Shai is telling you the law itself the law himself I should say all right. For they love to pray in the synagogues in the corners of the streets. They like to pray in the corners of the streets and in the corners of the synagogues everywhere, right? 
and they that they may be seen of men that they may be seen of men and that's how these guys operate in the nation of Israel all right the ones that want to uh, be seen of men they will they'll sit up here and videotape and record themselves praying they will sit up here and pray out in the open out in the field all right and it says that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So you, they have their, their reward. And you don't want to be like that. You don't want to be a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite unto the sight of men. You're making the ministry of the Most High look hypocritical. So you don't want to do that. Okay? Um, and it also says, verse 6, But thou, when thou prayest, <clears throat> enter into thy closets, and when thou shut thy door, pray to thy father, which is in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. <clears throat> so we got to pray in secret. We got to pray, pray in our closet. You know, face going to our door, shutting our door, praying to the east. Or even, like I said before, praying out and about and praying in our mind, which I like to call pocket prayers. All right something that is done in that that you're doing but it's done in secret and nobody knows it okay because that's what hypocrites do they they want to be seen of men praying to make themselves look a holier than them which makes them a hypocrite <clears throat> <clears throat> so let's go to psalms 141 man verse 2 yeah so <clears throat> dealing with how you pray right in in certain um and I don't have to go through all of them but just dealing with the fact that there's certain scriptures that sh show you how you pray and whatnot when you're in, in closure all right this is first Timothy's two and eight all right I will therefore that men pray everywhere right so we pray everywhere no matter where we go all right lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting all right and you can pray in your mind you don't have to make it public all right um and you can pray everywhere you know no matter where you're at but you don't pray where people can see you you know what i'm saying or oh yeah he's sitting up here praying that's that's being a hypocrite and that's being um you know that's seeking uh attention basically so that just to give you another edification you can pray anywhere it's just not out in the open, all right? And, and it's lifting up holy hands to the Most High, all right? And also, too, facing the east, where our, our uh, where we're at currently, where wherever Jerusalem's at, that's where we pray. Uh, that's where we pray to, all right? Um, so, let's go ahead and go to Psalms 141 and 2. Let's go to book of Psalms, chapter 140. It's like you're 142 and 2, all right? And transition to another topic in uh, dealing with prayer, all right? Psalms 142 and 1. I cried unto the Lord, and this is David speaking, right? I cried unto the Lord with my voice, with my voice unto the Lord did I make supplication. So he asked the Lord, right? I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble when my spirit was overwhelmed within me. Then thou knewest my path in the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge filled me. No man cared for my soul. I cried unto the Lord. I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are stronger than I. All right. Bring my soul out of prison that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. So, understanding this, He's praying to the Most High that the Lord can pass him around about with protection. Him being his refuge, cast, bringing him out, out of prison. And this is also relaying to the fact of, of the future of what would happen to Israel as a whole. But even with him, dealing with the things he dealt with, dealing with his son. All right. So, um, you know, that's just giving you an edification on that, you know. Praying for supplication, for refuge, for protection. All right. 
Um, let me go to Matthew 17 and 20. All right. Book of Matthew chapter 17 and verse 20. Book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 20 and it, and it says and the outside said unto them because of your unbelief actually I'm gonna give you um I'm gonna read up so so you can have um, a full understanding of, of the context right and G and then Yahweh Shai answered and said oh faithless and perverse generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I suffer you bring me hither to me and this is the person this was a, a person that was full with de filled with a demon, right? And Yahweh Shai rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that hour. Then came the disciples to, to Yahweh Shai. Then came the disciples to Yahweh Shai apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Yahweh Shai answered unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence to yonder and it shall and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you how be it this kind goeth not out by prayer and fasting so we got to fast and pray with certain handling certain situations because that's why this video is titled power of prayer because there's power in prayer but cer certain things take more fasting and more praying and, and more f praying for faith Okay, and that's exactly what we have to have while we're in this uh, captivity. While, while in general, you know what I'm saying? That's how the Lord is. That's how you're gonna have access to the Heavenly Father. Okay, in casting out demons, and also too, um, you know, dealing with certain situations for yourself. Okay, so you, so. So yeah, the book of Tobit, chapter 12 and 8, and it reads, Prayer is good with fasting and alms and righteousness. So prayer is good with fasting, okay? Because while you fast, you know, that's when you tap into the Spirit. That's when the Holy Spirit, you can tap into it even more. And those prayers are more locked and more focused and the Lord it has more power to answer it will give you more power for your prayers to be answered with fasting and alms and righteousness a little with righteousness is better than much with unrighteousness it is better to give alms than to lay up gold but the point is about prayer and fasting is good all right so i've got two two more scriptures two more instances instances to go before this lesson is complete so let's go ahead and go to second kings the uh, 19th chapter all right and we're gonna deal with we're gonna deal with this um this situation dealing with the time of the kings with hezekiah when he made his prayer to the lord when judah was being oppressed by the assyrians who at that particular point already overtook the northern kingdom and was taking over uh judah all right so 2 Kings 19 and 15. And it says, uh, 14, I'm, I'm uh, read this. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord, God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou for of all the kingdoms of the earth thou hast made the he made heaven and earth lord lord bow down thy ear hear open lord thy eyes and see and hear the words of sennacherib which has sent him to reproach the living god of a truth lord yahweh the kings of assyria have destroyed the nation the destroyed the nations in their land and have cast their gods into the fire 
when there were no gods, but the works of men's hands, wooden stone, therefore they, uh, they have destroyed them. Because you to understand that history with the Assyrians, when they were ruling at the time, they had all the other nations under subject. All right. And in uh, dealing with the king Sennacherib, they, they all had all the um, house of Israel um, under subjection. All right. And it says, Now, therefore, O Lord, our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. All right. So even thou only speak, say, speaking of what? Uh, praying to the most high. Look, Lord, please deliver us. Show your works of power that these other nations can know that you are the true power. You're the true king over all these nations. All right. So verse 20, the, then Isaiah's son of Amos sent to Hezekiah saying, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, uh, Sennacherib king of, Israel, uh, king of Assyria have uh, slack you. Let me read that again. Then Isaiah, the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah saying, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that which thou hast prayed to me against the Nacarot king of Assyria, I have heard. All right. So the Lord said he heard his prayer, right? So let's skip all the way down to verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians a hundred four score and five thousand. When they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So the Lord sent an angel down here, basically confirming, giving confirmation that he heard his prayer. And that angel ran ruck shot and destroyed, like it says, 400 score and 5,000 of those Assyrian soldiers. All right. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went and returned and dwelt at Nineveh. It came to pass as he was worshiping the house of Nisroch, his god, that Adrimelech and Sherezir, his son, smote him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Armenia. And Asaradan, his son, reigned in his stead. But the point is that, that that whole nation got destroyed. And also, too, the king got, you know, got, uh, the Lord allowed his king, that king to be destroyed as well. All right. So one, so that's, that's the power of the Lord hearing your prayer. That's the power of prayer of the Lord hearing your prayer and acting upon your prayer. So, 2 Maccabees chapter 10, verse 24 through 31. And I'm going to read this and I'm going to close on this. 2 Maccabees chapter 10 and verse 24. All right. And it says, and this is dealing with the time of the Maccabees, right? So let's go to verse 24 and I'm going to read all the way down to verse 31. Now, Timotheus, whom the Jews had overcome before when he had gathered a great multitude of foreign forces and horses out of, out of Asia, not a few came as though he would take Jewry by force of arms. Okay, so speaking of the Greeks, right? But when he drew near, they were with Maccabeus. Uh, turned themselves to pray unto God and sprinkled up earth upon their heads and girded their loins with sackcloth. So basically humbling themselves, right? The Maccabees uh, humbling themselves and, and praying to the Heavenly Father, right? Um, and it says, verse 26, and fell down at the foot of the altar and besought him to be merciful to them and to be an enemy to their enemies. And adversary to their adversaries as the law declares. So they're praying for the more most high to intervene and come against uh, the the Greeks, the Greek Empire, all right, at the time that came up against them, all right? And that the Lord be an enemy to be an enemy to them, all right? Because what the scripture says, it says that the most high before you, who can be against you, right? And it says, verse uh, 27, so after the prayer, 
they took their weapons and went on further from the city. And when they drew near to the in, to their enemies, they kept by themselves. Now the sun being newly risen, they joined both together. The one part having together with their virtue, their refuge also unto the Lord for a ple pledge of their success and victory and other side making their rage le uh, leader of their battle. But when the battle waxed strong, there appeared unto the enemies from heaven five comely men upon horses. Five comely men upon horses. Speaking of who? Angels came to our brother's defense. All right, Jonathan Maccabees, right? Um, it says, upon the ho horses with brittles of gold, and two of them led the Jews, and took Maccabees, and Slaki, it could be any of the Maccabees, I gotta read up on this again, and took Maccabees betwixt them, and c covered him on every side with their weapons, and kept him safe, but shot arrows and lightnings against the enemies, so that being confounded with blindness and full of trouble, they were killed. And there were slain of footmen, 20,500 and 600 uh, horsemen. So the Lord sent angels to encamp around Maccabeus, all right? One of the bro Maccabee brothers, all right? And they were shooting lightnings and arrows. All right, and the chariots could have been uh, actual UFO chariots, or they could have had like been on actual like spiritual horses from you know from the spiritual dimension. But the point is that he they they surrounded them and they protected them and they killed thousands upon thousands of of uh, Greek soldiers in behalf of their prayer that they gave up to the Lord and their humility and their prayer they, that they gave to the Lord. So this is the power that, the, that you can wield with the prayer, especially, most importantly, praying in the name of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, all right, which is the Hebrew name, the true name of the Heavenly Father, and the, through the name of the Son, by Hashem is, is through Yahweh Shai, or in the name, by Hashem is in the name, Yahweh Shai is the name of His Son, who the world calls Christ. All right. So that concludes this lesson. All right. Dealing with the power of prayer. All right. I want to say give give all praise, honor and glory unto Yahweh Bashim El Shai. Much love to the priests, prophets, and elders in this truth. Sincerely pushing this word out into the brothers and sisters in this truth. This is right. Everyone, God. Till next time. Shalom.